Nick John from Glovebox Live interviews Big Boy Bloater. full-out alliteration to start here and a warm Whitney welcome to Big Boy Bloater. Yeah! <laughs> now I rehearsed that you Bloater. Did very well. yeah. <laughs> you did very well I planned that. I nearly forgot it. I, got I would not have got that. I would not have got that in not a million years. So well done. <laughs> I saw you in Oxford last year. You played the fire station. Yeah. In yeah. Oxford which was a great gig. Yeah enjoyed um, that. Um, you're here again tonight. Now I've, I've become aware of you yeah. More so, I've heard if you've heard one of your early releases, but I've become aware of you more in the rock pages, shall we say? Yeah. Yep. Last year. So, is it fair to say last year was a good year for you? Yeah, I think signing up to uh, the mascot label group uh, Provoke, which our last album came out on. I mean, they're you know they're rock and blues, so but they're very much they sort of dragged us up and got us in all the magazines and all that sort of thing, you know, they got some great PR guys. Well, you were in, like, classic rock and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. I started noticing yeah. you in there, which is great, because it's a sort of broad church, so it's, it's, you're widening out of the blues thing. It's, it's what we always wanted to do. I'm not quite sure how we got stuck in the blues thing, really. I mean, the band I had a few years back was a sort of rhythm and blues band. It was that was the South, South Side that's Stompers. That's right, yeah. That's yeah. more alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> the South Side Stompers. I'm okay on that one. Okay. That one's all right for me. <laughs> I guess I had years of, of practice on that, but... Yeah, well, I had that band for years, and that was very much firmly rooted in that uh, rhythm and blues, New Orleans, 1950s kind of thing. When I finished that, I thought, you know, I, I've sort of taken this as far as I can get with it, really. Like, I've done everything I could ever possibly do with it. It's time to finish it. So we Were finished you in the, the sort of King Pleasure and the Biscuit Boys Yeah, back. sort of that, but a little more guitar maybe. Okay, yeah. But yeah, that sort of um, New Orleans R&B. Horn section. section horn something. section, yeah. piano, yeah. yeah, you know, some Fats Domino stuff, and... With a little more guitar, yeah. 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 So that that was definitely us. And we did the circuit, and we played all you know the festivals, and we did really well. But I, you know, I was writing songs and feeling like constrained by the by the style of the music, you know. So I finished that band up and spent a little bit of time thinking about what I wanted to do, yeah. and I came up with the limits. And the idea of the limits was always to just play whatever we played. You know, if it was a ska song, we play. If it was a rock song, we play. If it was a country song, we play. You know. If, if it came out of my head and I liked it, then that's it. It's, you know, it's going in the set. And well, I, think things fit in with your style, don't they? Yeah. So it's yeah. not like you're forcing anything. No. Uh, but it gives you that freedom to, to, to pick different genres, pick different styles, and so but, yeah, but it works I think the way I want to do it. My former association with the blues scene kind of thing still kept dragging us back in a little bit. And, and, and there's yeah, definitely blues in there without a doubt. But it's not specifically a blues band, I don't think so. Getting into the pages of things like classic rock was kind of where we were always aiming for, but it just took us a little while to get there. And I think having mascot label behind us as well, pushing us forward, is 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 the final sort of push we needed to to, to just to break out a little bit more, you know. Yeah. And you got great reviews for Luxury Hobo. We, I do you know what? Good again, well, right? Yeah, I, I was I was really knocked out by the reviews. Actually, everybody was, you know. So enthusiastic about it, and uh, they they liked it so much, and it's uh, it's always came a little... out of the swamp. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> it did come out of the swamp. Yeah, I'll stop in a minute. The yeah. Hampshire swamp. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it all came out of my head, and and uh, for people, you know, especially people like Classic Rock and, and Viva La Rock and magazines like that to say, yeah, we like that. That was uh, that was really really a, a great. Uh, uh, What's the word I'm for? Well, I think it's, yeah. it's, it seemed to have upped your level. Definitely, yeah. definitely, yeah. 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 Another stepping stone or whatever with the rungs of the ladder or whatever we... It's <laughs> all about rungs call. of the ladder, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's tough, you know, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure, really, on the circuit we play. There is a top, really. I, I think we can just sort of, you know, carry on doing what we're doing and hopefully people will carry on liking it. It's 
interesting. We, you know, you can play the new album Luxury Hobo to, to anybody, and they, they will hear things in there that you, you haven't heard, and they will pick out things and go, "Oh, that sounds just like blah blah blah," and I really like them. So you know, it's it seems to speak to a lot of people. So that's I'm not quite sure how I achieved that, but it's, <laughs> I guess it's a really good thing. It's, uh, well, it's better than speaking to no one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. I will do that occasionally as well. But, <laughs> but you said your background was in. Did you, was it something, was it music, you, you know, you mentioned the sort of 50s big band style, style or big band blues, is that fair? Yeah, I mean, the guys I was listening to... Were people, was that what you were listening to when you were younger? Was yeah, definitely. You people, people like uh, early Johnny Guitar Watson yeah. and uh, early Ike Turner, the sort of the son years, you know, when he was uh, he still playing piano on some of it, like, you know, so uh, it was that, yeah, real sort of guitar rhythm and blues, but with a horn section type yeah. thing, you know. Quite quite up tempo, but um, yeah, had a bit of a boogie to it, I guess. You know, so yeah. Yeah, I noticed as well that you've done work. I was going to ask you where and how and why with Carl Perkins and Wanda Jackson. Yeah, funny enough, how, I how did that happen? Just talking Anything about uh, that actually. Um, yeah, I supported Carl Perkins a few years back actually. Uh, I think I went to see him one year at uh, what was it, the Town and Country in Camden, which is the Forum now. Yeah, and uh, I saw him there about 1988, I think it was. And I think it was a year to the day after I'd set up the Southside Stompers, we were booked to open up for him at the same place. You know, so that was a real, it was a real sort of moment. You know, of being there three or four years earlier, watching him, being in the audience, and then coming back a few years later and being on stage opening up for him. You know, yeah. that was. Uh, Fantastic. I mean, he's a great guitarist, you know, uh, a great songwriter too. So that was, uh, that, that was, yeah. It's a moment, isn't it? It was a really, yeah. yeah, it was a really great, really great time that was. I remember that gig very clearly. That was very exciting. And and Wanda Jackson. Because she's done stuff with Jack White recently. Yeah, she's, she's, right she's, she's still doing a lot of stuff, isn't she? Yeah. She's uh, still putting it about, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> she, um. After a fashion. <laughs> I, I actually played guitar for her two, two or three times, I think. Thanks. Um, and uh, she was always, always has to tell you uh, that she was engaged to Elvis. Yeah. She always does that story. And then she tells you about the day in 1973, the day that she found Jesus. And she tells you all about that. And she yeah. goes through all these stories, you know. <laughs> actually, the first time I backed her, she came out and she had, uh, she had two black eyes. Proper, proper black, black eyes. Apparently, she was um, she'd been putting the trash out and she tripped over. Same story, goes. <laughs> <But, laughs> so uh, she, yeah, she kept sunglasses on. But yeah, you know, she she has some great stories. Like I say, talking about Elvis a lot. Uh, and, and and you know what? She travels with her husband Wendell. She's always Wendell. And uh, he just sort of stands there while she's telling all these Elvis stories, you know. And he's sort of in the background, <laughs> rolling his eyes, you know. Like Elvis. Well, he's presumably heard them, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he must have heard them, you know. I've heard them five or six times, these stories, so he must have heard them every day. Oh, so that grow with, with each <laughs> yeah, telling. Yeah, but, you know, she tell you, yeah, she always tells you about how she used to wear Elvis's ring. Uh, yeah. But it was good fun work. It's it? legendary. I mean, it's rock and roll history, isn't it? Coming out, coming out. It, it is, and it's you know, it's uh, it's it's great that we had the opportunity to get to meet these people, you know, because mm. they're not going to be around forever no. as well. And it's uh, we're losing so many at the moment. Aren't it, it's we, you know? it's like a mass cull at the moment. Yeah, isn't it? it's, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it really is. I'm uh, I'm watching me back, you know. <laughs> States, you, you take the limits over there? And, uh, I haven't taken the limits over yet. I did tour with the Southside Stompers a few years yeah. back, did a couple of tours, and um, we, we played, uh, I think we did one tour of East Coast and Canada, and then we did another tour of like West Coast, sort of LA, we did San Diego, uh, we went to Vegas, played Vegas a few times. How are the audiences there with, you know, you're, you're, you're taking this, this back to them, aren't you? You're taking this back to them. Yeah, <laughs> so, they were pretty enthusiastic about it, actually, I think. It's, um, I think it's better now in the States, but I think a few years back, 
nobody was playing this sort of music, you know. It's, and that's that's exactly why the British went back in there and, and sold it back to them, you know. Yeah. Even back to the Stones, you know, because you, you could you could barely find a blues gig in those days. And then the Stones come along and they make it hip again and uh, suddenly everybody wants it. You know, it's... Uh, they're, they're going back to their heritage a little bit more now, but I think for a lot of years they sort of just turned their back on it and mm-hmm. thought, you know. Mm-hmm. Which I can see because I'm always saying, uh, you know, I'm sort of forward facing, I like to move forward, don't look back too much, you know. Last year's album is last year's album, and the next album is the one I want to be working on. Yeah. Is that going to come so, out this year, looking for this year release? Or um, for next year? I've only written about half of it, probably. Oh, come on. Which actually is. I'm probably more ahead of schedule than I've ever been on an album. I yeah. normally leave to the night before. Like, you know, we're in the studio on Monday, and I'm there on Sunday writing some songs, like just like school homework, you know, in the, in the summer holidays. But, uh, so I've written, I've, I have written quite a lot for the for the next album, but I think um, probably in the summer we'll be recording it, so it's probably going to be early next year now. I think. But, uh, so full on gigs this, you know, to run through and. and Fitting in the writing sessions and uh, yeah, you know it's it's not too bad. It's you know it's it's better than having a, a full time job, you know, a proper real job. But um, yeah, lots of festivals this summer, and really looking forward to a Witchford Festival. Yeah. Playing the Hobgoblin, 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 Hobgoblin. Yeah. Hobgoblin yeah. Uh, Mention the sponsors. Stage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, which you know I'm very much looking forward to. I hear there's a really nice bar in in the in the marquee there, and the stage is really good and. Uh, I think the lineup for Witchwood Festival is really good yeah, as well. Yeah, it's looking so. really good. There's some great bands. There is, yeah. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, it's one of those ones where I think we're playing Friday night and I'm thinking, oh, I, you know, I'm going to hang around for the rest of the weekend, yeah. I think, and catch all the other great people that are playing there, like, no, so that should be a good one. Uh, yeah, lots of festivals over the summer and then uh, September, October, we're doing a bit more of a, uh, a tour of our own sort of thing, so we'll be going up and down the, the motorway and... Uh, up to Scotland and, and down to Lord knows where, you know, zigzagging yeah. across the country, <laughs> as we like to do. So, yeah, pretty pretty busy year, really, I think. Well, that's looking great. That's fantastic. And, you know, thank you very much for talking to us. Well, thank you I'm for talking really, to me. <laughs> really looking forward to the gig tonight. Be yeah, fantastic. it should be a good one, I think. It's a great venue here, so yeah. I really, really, uh, I like the vibe of it. And I think, uh, yeah, I think we're going to move a little bit tonight, I think. That'll be good. Yeah. I love you. Ooh, I love you. That was a broadcast production by Glovebox Live. UK. That hot bitch with a motor man.